And there's this nexus between seed oils and diabetes and poor sugar control that a lot of people don't understand. So not only does the, uh, the diabetes make the oxidation damage from seed oils worse, but consuming the oxidation products makes your blood sugar level worse. It ends up in this little cycle. Right. So they did this lovely study back in 1965. It was the Rose Corn Oil Study. And that was uh, probably the first randomised controlled trial that actually showed harm from uh, vegetable and seed oils. They basically had a couple of different groups. They had an olive oil group. They had a corn oil group, which is a seed oil, and they had a saturated fat group. Uh, in the uh, saturated fat group, over the duration of the study, it went for two years, there was one death. And in the corn oil group, they had five deaths. So uh, the conclusion of the authors was that you know, seed oils are really shouldn't be used, they shouldn't be recommended, and as you can predict, those findings were routinely ignored. But the really interesting findings from this study happens with when they discuss what happened to the individual participants, and they describe one case in particular who actually developed diabetes when he went on the corn oil, and then they stopped giving the subject corn oil, the diabetes disappeared, and they, mm -hmm. they did this... Uh, you know, no intervention, intervention. And they found that whenever they gave the subject the corn oil, his diabetes returned. And the way they were measuring it was with glucose in the urine. So when your blood glucose levels go extremely high, the kidneys can no longer hold all the sugar in your body and some excess sugar leaks into the urine. So glucose in the urine, and it's thought to probably be about 14 or 15 millimoles a litre in the blood that will lead to what we call this renal overflow. and what they actually, you know, this is very good evidence of extremely poorly controlled diabetes. So these case studies are very strong indicators that you can basically lead to somebody meeting the diagnostic criteria for diabetes by giving them seed oil and then reverse that by removing the seed oil. Right. So very, very strong links between uh, seed oils and diabetes. Grass-fed meat does have one very important advantage over uh, grain-fed meat, and that's to do with nutrition. So grass-fed meat will have better levels of vitamin K2. It will have better levels of vitamin D. It will have better levels of omega-3. So they've done some very interesting feedlot studies where they've actually taken uh, what they call um, grain-finished cattle. So they, they spend most of their life on lovely pastures, and then they put them in a feedlot eating corn to fatten them up. And they do periodic studies where they uh, take a sample of their meat um, every week or so for the nine month period. And what you can see over a period of months is that you'll end up, you'll start out with a reasonably good level of omega-3 uh, within grass-fed uh, cattle. And over a period of time of exclusive grain feeding, that omega-3 will turn down to zero. So we know that uh, two-thirds of the brain is fat and about 20% of that fat is actually an omega-3, a DHA fat. So omega-3 is really important. So if you're exclusively consuming grain-fed meat, then you may be missing out on some nutrients. So yes, there is an argument for grass-fed and pasture-raised meat. However, this whole notion that it's going to be generating oxidation and it's going to be inflammatory and then toxic and all of that, I don't think that bears scientific scrutiny. As long as you're making sure that you're getting your nutrients that you need from other sources and maybe you're having regular salmon for your omega-3 and right. you're having other saturated fat sources of food that are rich in vitamin D and so on and so forth, then there's no real reason why you must avoid having grain-fed meat. Most of my patients will tolerate grain-fed meat very well, but understanding that it does have some nutritional deficiencies when you compare it to pasture-raised meat. That's, a, that's the real reason why you go pasture-raised meat, not because of any you know, potential inflammation. Remember, if the meat isn't rotten, if it's not rancid, then the fats you're consuming are not oxidised 